Oh, good day again, folks. It's Ash here from glassfusing.com.au again. Uh, today we just wanted to do a quick little glass fruit lace project. Uh, we've had a customer recently ask how they can do it, and we figured it was much easier just to do up a little video demonstration than it was to send a, a long and complicated email. So for today, we are just going to run one of our little baby kilns, because our big kilns are all busy. So we've got a little 220 by 220 square shelf. We're going to be using Hi-Fire Primer, just because it, it sticks a little bit better, and sometimes the primer can, can peel away with the glass frit fractionally when you fire it. So first step is we've got to prime up this shelf. I've already shaken this up a bit, and fortunately, because it's Hi-Fire, it's nowhere near as picky as Primo is, and it's even less picky than original, which is excellent. You can tell you're using high fire because it's that pinkish colour. We won't worry about that, it's high fire. <laughs> so for this project, we are just going to make a round piece of frit lace, uh, which is fairly easy to do, but it is it can be troublesome, so it's worth doing the video about it. Basically, what you want to do is to get the frit to peel away. If my video editing skills are up to scratch, I'll put a picture of the final product now. And if they're not, that didn't make much sense at all, did it? So, we put one layer down. I like to turn my workpiece because I'm picky. Uh, typically, we'll also do a little bit better job of waiting for this to dry. But I'm just going to wait for it to soak in a bit before putting on the next coat. Because we're trying to do this in a live video. Uh, after that one, as you can see with high fire, it builds up quite quickly. So we've already got quite a lot of pink onto this shelf, and over the next three coats it will go up dramatically. Once we've done two coats, I like to do my first 45 degree, then I'm going to turn one more time and do another 45 degree coming back and turn it one final time. So more coats than you need, but that's how we like to work. Alright, instead of boring you through the rest of this process, because this is taking quite some time to soak in this morning, I'm going to finish priming up the shelf and then pop it in the kiln. Uh, we're going to take this one up to 288 degrees Celsius and hold it there for 20 minutes. We'll be back shortly. Okay, welcome back. So, the kiln shelf is now dried. We again took it up to 288 degrees Celsius and held it for 20 minutes. We used high fire primer because it, um, it forms a harsher finish. Now, when the frit makes itself into a lace, it will drag slightly and potentially pull up a, a lighter primer. Uh, to be honest, we've never tried Primo, uh, we've never even tried Papyrus, we just use High Fire, but it will probably work fine on both of those as well. So, uh, how much frit do you use? We have a pretty simple rule, and it is 2 grams per square centimetre. On this one we're going to make something that is about 20 by about 20, you might not be able to see the measurements from, well, this camera, because unfortunately uh, we can't find the battery for the good camera, so we're onto our iPhone again. At any rate, because it's 20 by 20, that's 40 square centimetres, we want 2 grams per square centimetre, so we want 80. We're going to use a mixture of 136 and just a regular clear medium. Uh, so they are both medium frits. And I probably want about one third clear. So we'll pour that in, that says 10-ish, that says 25-ish, that's got us up above 30, so that's close enough. We'll put about 50 grams of blue in, just until this gets up to 80. That's going to be close enough for me. <laughs> Alright, so we give this just a little stir to mix some of the clear in with the blue. If we're going to make a mess, try to do it over your kiln shelf, Ash. That's a, uh, a much better way to do it. Okay, so it's a little bit mixed. A little bit mixed now. It doesn't have to be mixed. It will it'll mix itself pretty well on the shelf. Now, to get an even-ish spread of frit onto the shelf, we make a grid pattern, so we go one way pouring frit out, and then I'll come back this way. But I can just show you instead of mentioning it.
And once we've done that, we can look and just see any areas that are light on and fill them in a little bit. You just want a fairly even coating of frit. And that looks pretty good to me. Now, if it doesn't look too good to you, you can take a hake brush and smooth it out. Let's see if I can find anywhere. Not really. Uh, you can take a hake brush and just gently drag it to, to fill in any bare areas. Okay, so now we are going to put this one in the kiln. Uh, I'll take you over to the kiln and we'll show you the settings there. Okay folks, so as promised, uh, here's how we set up our kiln for this one. So we're just going to go into it's five segment firing. First ramp is 300 an hour, up until 566. And then we're going to let that sit there for five minutes. Then we're going to ramp at 350 an hour, up until 796. And we're going to let that sit there for 20 minutes. Full speed, down to 510 for annealing. We're going to let that go for 45 minutes. And then at 111 an hour, down to 427. We're going to let that sit for 5 minutes. And then we're going to go at about 180, down to about 80, until we're done. Now, because this one was a nice small one, uh, only a 20 by 20, we can get away with a faster ramp at the 300 and the 350. You can ramp, if it was just frit and there was no shelf involved, you could ramp at full speed up. It, it, it tolerates the change really well. However, kiln shelves have a tendency to crack. Uh, our standard big ones will ramp at a maximum of 250. These little ones will go 300. If we have a 400 by 400 or a 450 by 450 running, we will ramp at 140 an hour just to save the shelf. All right, I'll show you the results shortly. Okay, folks, so today is now tomorrow. We uh, we had this firing finish up at about 7 o'clock last night or so, but we were busy doing a uh, complete clean out of one of our children's bedrooms, which was drastically overdue, so we left it till today. Uh, as you can see, it's had quite a nice little fusing. Uh, we've got quite a lot of nice laced joint sections. We've also got several small sections, which we'll use for pendant jewelry. Now, this was our two gram per square centimeter amount of glass. If you do want it to have, open up, have bigger holes, but have everything connected, you can go up to sort of four grams per square centimeter. Uh, I might actually just build one of those as well, just so you can see the difference. Now this stuff is, it's all glass, so it's all fragile. Uh, this is super fragile, literally treat it like eggs, because it will, well, it'll break at the drop of a hat. So we're very careful as we pull it up. Okay, so as you can see, it's nicely joined all together. Uh, there is some cleanup on the backside required. Because this is very fragile, what we'll do is we'll soak this for about 24 hours uh, in a vinegar and water mix, and that will make it very easy to get the, the high fire off. So there you go, uh, frit lace. You can use it for small sections in jewelry, or you can use it to add a, a nice feature onto. Let's take a piece of white, If we have that onto there, suddenly that piece of white is actually interesting. Okay, so as we just saw, we've had that piece down there, which was made at 2 grams per square centimetre. We're now going to make a 4 gram per square centimetre, so you can see the two different types of lace. So again, we've got our, our scales up. We're going to say this is 20 by 20, which means we've got 40 square centimetres of area. Uh, by four, which means we're looking for 160 grams. So we want about 80 grams of clear and 80 grams of we're going to make this one out of 121 light green. So measure out 80 grams. I'm going to get out a frame so it's easier. Okay, it's about 40 of clear. And about 40 of green. So this is 80 so far, which is half of the total, but my mixing bowl is, uh, I should have got a bigger one. Right, so let's mix up 
relatively well. Again, we're going to go side to side, and then we're going to go up and down. Number 40 of clear. Okay, now that all looks fairly good. So I'm firing this one on Papyrus just to see how it goes. Uh, so if it doesn't go well, at least you won't have to make that mistake. And I'll go pop this one in the kiln. Okay, so I've just taking this one out of the kiln. Uh, it's still warm to the touch, so I won't fiddle with it too much. However, we fired this one on Papyrus, and the Papyrus is gone perfectly well so no need to do the kiln wash if you uh, hate it or don't have the time for it uh, it even looks like we could reuse that piece of papyrus which we can most times so this was four grams per square centimeter this one I just got it on a piece of backing uh, was two grams per square centimeter you can presumably guess what three grams per square centimeter would look like somewhere in the middle of these two so yeah that's uh frit lacing nice and easy quick uh, it gets rid of some old glass you can just smash up some of your old glass and, and make your own uh, and then it's nice and cheap as well now we did have quite a lot of kiln wash stuck to the back of this one it's soaked in some vinegar for probably an hour now uh, and 95 percent of it's gone it'll go back in for another few minutes and that'll get the rest off perfect all right well i hope you've enjoyed watching the video we've enjoyed making it the same way we always do and we will talk to you next time. Thank you again. It's uh, Ash here from glassfusing.com.au.